coach uh, down in Irvine, uh, California. So what are the natural forces in running? Gravity, number one, the strongest force. Second, ground reaction. When you hit the ground, there's a force in the opposite direction. Like when cars hit in an intersection, you don't think of them being bouncy, but they, they fly apart. So every time you hit the ground, there's a force in the opposite direction. Muscle elasticity. Our muscles have elasticity to them if they're not tight. But once we tighten the muscle, you lose that elasticity feature. Um, muscle contraction. Muscles can only do two things, contract and relax, contract and relax. What happens to a muscle when it starts to fatigue? No. It contracts, it stops relaxing. You, it, that's why you get tight. Muscles, you know, fire, 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 fire. Ugh, they start to go slower, but they stay in a more contracted state. And that's where a potential for injury as well. They're in a contracted state and you're trying to <coughs> stretch them out because you're leaving your leg on the ground too long. <coughs> Pull something. Uh, torque, the redirection of energy. That's really important in running. Torque is the redirection of energy. You know, you push on a squeezed toothpaste and it goes this way. You're pushing a different direction than where it's going. This is how we get forward movement in running. Gravity pushes this way and we're going to redirect it into a forward movement through torque, redirection of energy. And then finally, momentum or inertia. That once you get something rolling or moving, it's easier to keep it going than it is to start and stop over and over again. So let's kind of consider these things uh, in a normal running situation, how most people do things against all of this stuff. Average runner lands on their heel out in front of their body, <laughs> absorbs that, that ground shock, puts the brakes on a little bit. Then as their general center of mass is traveling forward, the muscles in the leg have to contract to support the body weight. Contract, contract, contract. And then at some point, once the body weight is passed over the foot, push off and do the same thing on the next leg. And push off and do the same thing on the next leg. So you can run pretty fast doing that, but it's at a very high energy cost to do it, so you're not going to last very long. Like if we took anyone out here and just had you run 100 and we timed it, and you multiplied it out to a, a marathon distance, you'd all be fast freaking marathoners. Problem is you can't maintain that speed for that duration because you don't have the technique or the, you know, anything to, to be able to pull that off. So this model, this model of pose running uh, just redefines this whole method of of how we move forward. And it's, it's pretty easy uh, to understand. It's three pieces. And I'm going to go through each one of these. And they all have a lot of details within them. But if you can just remember these three things, then we can start to get down to the nitty gritty details of them. But this is the basic pose uh, formula. First thing is pose or posture. And again, for any activity or sport you want to do, your posture is a critical element. Okay? So we do need strength to be able to hold this posture, body position. And the running pose is a figure four shape, basically, with the, with the leg that's off the ground. The weight is on the ball of the foot. And the arms are pretty close in to the body. And most elite runners are running with their arms bent more than 90 degrees. They're high and close to their body. The shoulders are relaxed though. The more the arms open up, the longer the swing. Okay? So that's going to take longer to perform than that. Okay? We're not bent over at the waist. The head isn't out in front. Those hips are pulled in, and the head is right over the line of the body. And again, this is like the Scantron answer sheet that you put on top of what someone's actually doing. 
So when we videotape somebody running and we stop it at the frame where their general center of mass is directly over their foot and they look like this, right? I'm still in balance, so I'm over my support. But a lot of the weight's behind, you know, half of it's in front and behind. And we want it on the support in a straight line. So that's the deviation from the standard that you can define very easily with video. Stop it at the exact moment that their body weight is directly over support and how close are they to the right position. And the further you get from the right position, the more effort and energy it takes to get to that next position. So the pose is that first critical element. The second piece is falling. And the pose is the position from which falling can begin. You can't fall when your body weight is behind the support point. So this is critical that we're not bending over at the waist when we run because that moves your general center of mass behind your support. So you can't start to fall until your general center of mass gets over your support or out in front of it. Well, if you're bent way over, now it's going to be too much because you're going to have too much weight out in front. So now you're going to slam your foot to the ground to protect yourself from falling and you're going to break. Okay, so the deviation that we need from straight up is so minimal. And I want you guys to try this right now and wake you up a little bit. Put your books down and stuff and just stand up. I want you to just hop up and down on the balls of your feet. Okay, and we're going to do this right and wrong because I want you guys to learn the difference of where we need to be when we run. We want to be on the balls of our feet, okay, not up on our toes. I want you to go up on your toes now. Hop on your toes and I want you to feel the increased tension in your toes when you do that. And I want you to feel it in your, see you feel it in your calves too, don't you? And this is what a lot of people say about pose running. Oh, it hurts my calves. It's because you're running on your toes. Drop back to the balls of your feet. This is where we're made to land. And now feel the other extreme. Hop on your heels. Feel how dead that is, how loud it is. Doesn't feel very good, does it? It got loud too. Now, you need a little room in front of you. What I'd like you to do is hop up and down and then how little do you need to move your general center of mass to start to move forward? Try it. Hop up and down. How little do you need to lean? Don't look at the ground. You just put your head way out in front of your spine. How little can you lean? If you watch me do it, it doesn't even look like I'm leaning, does it? because I moved my general center of mass a millis distance in front of where I'm hitting the ground and there's forward movement. It doesn't take a lot of lean to move or to move fast. For a really short distance, like maybe a 40 yard dash or something, there's an acceleration uh, element that you, can, that you could probably accelerate a little bit faster than you can fall. But it's such a short distance. I mean, even in a hundred, you know, you jump off a building, you're not moving very fast the first few feet. How fast are you moving by the time you hit the ground? Okay, so it's just body mass. It, it's how fast you can get that, your body weight up to speed. It doesn't take very long, you know, if I'm falling, I can get up to speed real quick. So this pose position, it's a position from which falling begins. And falling is just getting your body weight in front of your support. And once you get that rolling, this is the last element. Pull. Pull your foot from the ground. Pull your foot from the ground. What's the opposite of pulling? Pushing. Pushing. And that's what most people think you need to do to run. That you need all this drive and power to drive it into the ground. No, it's not what you need. You need to be able to pull your foot off the ground to allow you to keep falling, okay? If you're gonna run any distance, would you rather push your body weight up in the air 
with each step you take going up against gravity and then landing on it with force? Or how much does your foot weigh? Does anyone know how much their foot weighs? It's about 2% of your body weight. So if your choice is to push your body weight in the air or pull 2% of your body weight off the ground, what would you rather do? Repeatedly, you know, thousands of steps. This is why those guys that run 440 miles, they don't have gigantic, massive, powerful weightlifting legs because they're picking up, you know, 2% of their body weight off the ground. That's all they're doing, just picking their feet up off the ground. So you do not move in running with power from your legs. You fall, okay? Oh yeah, I'm running good. In place. How come I'm not going anywhere? Ah. Okay, I'm probably the weakest guy in the room here. But I can move pretty fast. I don't have that much leg power. I just let my body weight go and have to pull my feet up off the ground to allow myself to do it. That's pretty decent speed running. I'm not breathing hard. I didn't really do much work to do that. I just pulled my feet up off the ground as quick as I could to at the rate that I'm falling. If I'm not falling very much, I'm not moving very fast. The more I lean, the faster I go, the faster I have to pull my feet from the ground. So pulling is this third element. And the key to it is cadence needs to be appropriate to the speed that you're traveling at. And the minimum cadence that we need in running is 90, 90 cycles per minute. Why is that? Be one foot. So that's one leg hitting the ground, you know, coming up off the ground, 90 steps in a minute. The reason we need that is that's a requirement for getting the benefit or the help of ground reaction and muscle elasticity to help you when you're running. Okay, and here's an example of it. This is the system all working together. Ground reaction, muscle elasticity, you know, I'm putting in a little bit of energy, but not that much to do this, okay? I'm doing the same movement, but I'm spending too much time on the ground, so I have to use much more muscle power to get me up in the air than ground reaction, muscle elasticity, everything working together, okay? So this is a lot easier than this. And this is a lot easier than right? This is how people run, and you can hear it. Right? Driving their feet into the ground. I want you guys to stand up again and try this difference. And you need a little bit of room, but you're basically just going to be in one spot. I want you to run in place, driving your feet into the ground. I want you to feel that shock. Now do the opposite. Pull your feet off the ground quick. Try to pull your foot before it even hits the ground. You feel how much less impact that is on your body to pull your feet from the ground? So the only element you have to add is lean and pew, you start moving. Even a big guy, you know, doesn't have to pound or make a lot of noise. Go ahead and run a few times back and forth, Brian. Just gets that body weight going, pulls his feet off the ground and pew, there he goes. It doesn't have to be heavy. Did you notice how his head isn't bouncing when he runs? It's more hovering. The pull is pulling your foot up under your butt. It's not hip flexor. We don't want the foot out in front. This makes you lean back and doesn't allow you to fall. But it's also not this, okay? See that? I left the knee down and just, and just hinged at the knee. That's not it either. When you pull your foot directly up under your hip, your knee does come up. But it's not a knee lift. You're not doing it from the hip, hip flex.